Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the different kinds of blur that are available to you inside of DaVinci Resolve. The footage that we're going to be blurring today is this right here. This is Tank the Sea Turtle who lives in the Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta. And it's just him swimming right along the glass and then gets to the end of it. We're going to jump right into Fusion to get started with this and we're going to start playing around with our blurs. As you can see, we're not in the edit page so my rotation does not take effect and neither does any color grading because Fusion stuff happens before color grading happens in Resolve's like internal workflow. The first thing you want to do once you're here is make sure that your effects library is open. You'll see that up here in your top left corner. You just go ahead and click on that and then drop down the tools menu and click on blur. Otherwise, you can click in here, hit shift space, and then type blur. This will allow you to search through all of the tools available to you through Fusion. So we have all these different kinds of blur right here, and all these different kinds of blur right here. You'll see some repeats, and you'll see some in here that aren't in here. That's okay, because those are in the open FX area down here. We're going to start off with the most common and I think one of the oldest types of digital blur and that is Gaussian. So that's this one right here. We're going to go ahead and add that in. And this is really just a very basic blur. It's going to blur everything in the image. It's going to blur it all the same amount. You can see that it blurs it on the edges here and you can kind of see through it. If that's a problem, just increase your scale a little bit. But the controls that we have with Gaussian blur are horizontal strength, vertical strength, border type, and global blend. That is super basic. So blend will just blend it with your footage. So the more it's blended, the less you'll see the blur. That one's pretty basic, and you'll notice that all of the blurs that we go through today have a blend. So if you want it to be less intense, that is one way of doing it. We have vertical strength. Oh, gang is checked. So we're gonna uncheck gang. So we have vertical strength, which will change our up and down, and we have horizontal strength, which will change our side to side. So if you only want blur to happen in one direction, or if you want to try to use it for a transition or something like that, it's going to be very helpful to be able to separate these and then go whichever way you need to use. Next up in our blurs video, we have box blur. Kind of a similar feel here. So we're going to go ahead and same deal. Horizontal strength right there, vertical strength right there. Iterations make it smoother, or they take it away. Blend again does the same thing for box blur that it does for Gaussian. Pretty simple. We're gonna do a directional blur now. This is one of my favorite kinds of blur because it allows you to kind of just like smear everything, which can allow you to get some very cool effects. We're gonna keep it on linear right now, but you can also do radial, centered, and zoom, and we're gonna cover all of those. So for linear, we're gonna go length, and then you can change the angle of it so that you can tell it which way it needs to blur everything. So you can see we are going down to the left right there, down to the right, up to the right. You can go in full circles, you can do whatever you want. You saw me use this in the intro of this video when my logo kind of came out and went like this. That was a directional blur. So glow is just going to make brighter things glow and it can be used for transitions again if you want to flash it up and then go away with it or if you want to just make everything glowy a little bit dreamier looking there you go we're gonna go ahead and reset all of these and then we're gonna switch into radial so radial is gonna make everything bubble out from the middle you can still change your angle but it's gonna swirl your stuff because it's all coming from that central point If we turn that way up you'll see it bubble way out and then if we change the angle it's all changing the angle from that central point. Centered blur is really cool as well. What it's gonna do is take every pixel that it blurs, all of your controls are gonna be from the center of that pixel. What we can do to demonstrate this is increase our length, and if you look, it kinda just looks like a normal directional blur right now until we start to change the angle. So watch on Tank's flipper right here what happens when we change the angle. See, it kinda rotates around its own center. Not the center of the image, but the center of the thing being blurred. Then we'll pop into the zoom blur and get all of these set back to zero. We change the length, you can see what happens as we slowly move back and forth. 
we get a zooming in or a zooming out kind of a blur and the angle again is going to swirl from that center. If you need to go past either of these ends, you can manually enter a value next to your slider in that little dialog box. So if we wanted to go instead of 0.1, a whole one, just type in one and it's going to change your slider now so it can go even higher than it could before. If we turn that back down to around 0.1, that was our old maximum. Our new maximum is way up here. Again, swirls, that is directional blur. Directional blur is an incredibly useful tool and I highly recommend that you get comfortable with it and its settings because it can really come in handy. Next up, another great blur to know how to use is the mosaic blur. You'll see this one oftentimes when people are trying to censor something and a lot of the time, maybe in like YouTube thumbnails when they're trying to censor something but still give you an idea of what's behind that blur. So if you watch Tank here, as we turn up our pixel frequency, you can see that you can kinda tell that, that there is indeed a sea turtle, but maybe for some reason you're trying to hide something about it, like if it has a brand or like a logo on it for some reason, and you don't want people to see that logo, you can close that down and have it be kind of visible, but mosaic blurred. If we come down to smooth strength, you can see that as you move that up, it just turns it into more of a smooth, like a normal kind of a blur. If we turn that pixel frequency down, those pixels that it's mosaic blurring with are gonna get bigger the lower we go and smaller the higher we go. So you can see right there, it just looks like it's shot in poor quality. It's because those pixels are still larger than normal pixels, but the blurring effect is not having such an extreme effect that you can't tell what's going on. Whereas if we go to this side, no idea because those pixels are huge. So we'll get rid of mosaic blur, great thing for censoring things. And then we'll go ahead and get into our radial blur. So we'll go ahead and add this. You can see that this is almost the same thing as our radial option in our directional blur, but there are some key differences. Primarily in that you can change where you are radial blurring from. So if you want it to come from a certain spot, have one thing in focus while the rest of them are blurred out, you could say, hey, get this shark right here, right? So we're gonna get just his face, move that down a little bit, move it to the left with our X and Y position controls, and then we can change how blurry everything else is using that point as our starting point. So that can be really good if you want to have something be very apparent and have everything else be kind of washed out. You can use this for a ton of different things. Shift space again, type in blur, and we'll go ahead and use our prism blur this time. So prism blur is gonna be similar to what is called channel blur in other programs. If we watch what happens when I move my X position over, you can see that it looks like we've kind of put a prism in front of the lens. If you watch Tank's flipper again, we go ahead and slide that and you can see that different color channels get pulled out as we change the middle of that blur. So you can see we've got a green line, a blue line, and a little bit of a red line coming through right there. If we change that blur strength, again, it's just gonna make it more blurry. If we change our aberration distance though, it's gonna stretch those colors out away from whatever source they have found. And if we change our aberration strength, it's just gonna affect how much of those colors is coming out. So you can see now we've got a rainbow version of tank coming off of tank. So this is actually a pretty cool tool. You can use it sometimes for color grading to make sure that your colors only have the colors in them that you want them to have represented and you can use it for some crazy cool artistic effects like you can see right here if you were going for this kind of a look in your video one step there it is prism blur pretty sweet and then the last one that we're going to cover today is this just regular old blur you can see that it uses different filters that you can achieve with other blurs, but it just gives you a go-to tool where you can use these things and you can also choose to only blur certain channels. So if I want to only blur the red channel, you can see that I can blur out those reds. You can see it kind of coming out in the shadow right here. If you watch when I turn that down, red's gone, but we can blur that red channel to make things that are red show up blurred. It'd probably be a lot more visible here if we use green and then check out Tank's body. 
So we'll go ahead and change that Y blur size. Yeah, so the whole green channel right now is being blurred, while the red and the blue channels are not being blurred. So that's why you can see the red on his fin here and the blue of the water are not really being affected. Only the greens are being affected. Same thing goes if we get the red. Now it's just the blues that aren't being blurred. Get rid of the green, bring the blues in. Now the greens aren't, but the red and the blue are. So this is a really fun one. Again, if you're going for artistic effects, great for that. Or you can use it to find where certain colors are showing up in your image. It's a versatile tool, just like most blurs. Again, we have blend, same as all the rest of them. If you wanna learn more about DaVinci Resolve, I would highly recommend that you check out the general Resolve playlist in the description box down below. I have a ton of videos on there that are all designed to help you get better and more comfortable inside of DaVinci Resolve. So if you are in the process of learning or you know that you can always learn something to get better, feel free to check out those videos down there. Also, make sure you've liked the video if it helped you out. And if you wanna keep learning from me, make sure to hit that sub button and ring that bell. I will see you guys next Thursday. Until then, have a great week.